Who would have thought this would have happened? The head of Australia's energy market operator has said that Australia's transition to renewables is staggering and world leading. And yeah, I know I'm an Australian, so I'm biased, but if you actually look at it objectively, it, it is true. Now, it's incredible that it's true, considering the fact that um, a big part of our political landscape are very much against renewable energy and have been trying to employ scare tactics to prevent the transition to renewables. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. The head of the Australian energy market operator has underlined the world leading nature of the country's transition to 100% renewables, says reneweconomy.com.au. And the technology challenges in pushing coal and other fossil fuels out of the grid. It's happening now at a very fast pace and it's really exciting to see. What's really exciting as well is, remember last year, I made some videos talking about how Adelaide is the world's first city in the world, the first city, first major city in the world to employ 100% renewable energy. And they did it for a, a bunch of days in a row. I think it was like nine or 10 days. Well, now the crazy thing is a massive wind farm is about to be connected to that grid in Adelaide. So when it's not sunny, they'll still get energy from sun, from the solar power, because solar power still works when it's not sunny, but less energy. However, making up that gap will be all this increase, this huge increase in wind generation. It's actually been connected to the grid only a few days ago. Plus, between then and now, a bunch more solar and renewables have been added to this grid, which is incredible. But the same thing is happening, albeit a little bit more slowly, in the rest of Australia, especially on the East Coast. The AEMO has forecast that Australia's national electricity market could have enough wind and solar to meet all grid demand at certain times as early as 2025. Uh, the whole of Australia could have enough renewables at certain times for 100% renewable energy as early as 2025. Imagine where we're going to be in 2030. Coal power plants will be dead and buried. I think they will be. Um, a lot of them are shutting down. Some of them are saying they're not going to shut down until the early 2030s. But the problem is that they're not actually considering the reality here, which is that the cost of batteries continues to come down. The cost of renewables continues to come down. That's what they're fighting against. That's a tough fight. When renewables flood the power system, they can push out synchronous generation and the steady electrical heartbeat that we've relied on for so long, said Chief Executive Daniel Westerman to the Australian Energy Conference in Sydney last week. We're a fair way down the road in understanding what a power system running on high levels of inverter-based resources requires to operate reliably. This is truly world-leading work where we are collaborating with system operators and research institutions around the globe. AEMO last week released the latest engineering roadmap, which listed its priorities in getting the grid ready to accommodate periods of 100% renewables. It includes a focus on technologies such as grid forming inverters that will become the new electrical heartbeat and on managing largely distributed resources such as rooftop solar that are largely invisible in terms of grid management to the market operator. One of the major challenges, there are some significant ones, is to ensure that the huge pipeline of wind, solar and battery storage projects can get connected and can meet its targets, which include an average 80% renewables by 2030. Now, we're definitely headed towards those numbers. There's no question. But I think we can hit more than 82% in 2030. I think we're going to hit closer to 90% based on the numbers, the data that I have available. And based on the true real world cost of renewables continuing to drop so quickly. Westerman says that will require a threefold increase though in large scale wind and solar to 48 gigawatt by 2030. And another threefold increase to more than 150 gigawatt by 2050 to keep pace with the electrification of transport and industry and obviously trucks and everything else. Storage needs to expand by a factor of 30 to where it is today from 60 gigawatts. The thing is, so much energy storage, battery storage and solar and wind has already been deployed in the past, over the past 10 years, when the costs were so much higher than they are today. So you can imagine what costs will be in five years time. They'll be significantly cheaper than what they are today. So that will help in this process. 
He said the connection process, one of the bugbears of the wind and solar industry, many of whom have suffered significant delays in recent years, has improved. For year 2022 to 2023, we've seen a 10% improvement in average processing time across the application and registration processes and a 20% time improvement for commissioning, he said. Collectively, this means a three-month decrease in the end-to-end -end processing time for connections. I know there's more to these timeframes than just this process, but I do believe these are examples of how focus, collaboration, and genuine commitment from all parties can achieve positive results. When we look at the grid connections processes around the world, the feedback I get is that Australia is leading the way. Now, it's true that the United States is deploying a lot of renewables as well as China. China's employing the most by a million miles. But the US is having some challenges and it's not due to desire. I mean, there's so many companies um, that are wanting to install massive projects, energy projects, battery projects, solar projects, wind projects, projects that will help the grid. But the projects are being held up by paperwork and it's becoming a huge issue in the United States. That bottleneck that bottleneck in some ways, unfortunately, is a problem here in Australia as well. Regulations can be difficult to deal with. He said, we also recognize stakeholders' feedback that the technical registration phase is still a concern. We continue to actively support efforts to improve it. AEMO is committed to building a connection process that is transparent, consistent, timely, and cost-effective. RenewEconomy.com.au says that Westerman pointed to the latest release of the Gen Cost Report prepared with CSIRO, which underlines the enormous cost advantages of wind, solar, and storage over other fossil fuel technologies, and not just other fossil fuel technologies, but other alternative technologies such as hydrogen. Our operational insights confirm the effect of renewables on the national electricity market. More renewable output puts downward pressure on wholesale electricity prices and reduces emissions. The media would like you to believe that renewables simply increase the price of electricity. But as Tony Sieber says, they're actually pointing us in only one possible direction. There is only one outcome of a world that runs solely on renewable energy, and that is near marginal cost of energy, meaning incredibly low electricity prices. That, my friends, is the solution to the world's biggest challenges, not only from an environmental perspective, but also from a perspective of humanity. Remember, much of the West didn't have electricity only 100 years ago. Now that's completely changed and so has our standard of living. The same thing can happen in many other places around the world where people don't enjoy the standard of living that we do, such as India, Africa, and Southeast Asia. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.